it's exciting to see some uh, old faces, some new faces, and uh, is anybody interested in having some fun today? Yeah. Good. Is anybody interested in learning uh, something new about your coaching today? Yeah. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could do two, th both of those together? Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. No, learning is hard. No, learning is fun. <laughs> So, uh, so I mentioned that I, I teach the, I, I lead the coaching skills forum calls where we get to explore our coaching skills in depth and, and, uh, and provocative conversations. And out of that, it, it, I'm constantly curious about and exploring our coaching skills that we've all been taught. Um, and the things that I discover and, and experience with the coaches that I work with on those calls or in my classes, I get to then turn around and create new lessons for the class uh, or new workshops such as this, the elements of our coaching. Um, this is a segment of the Fast Pass that she mentioned. So if you want to learn more about the class, I got a booth over there, but we're here to learn about the elements. What you know what, before we do the elements, because part of the things that I love working with is helping coaches really um, discover the artistry and the performance of coaching. Has anybody ever faced one of those oh crap moments in their coaching? <laughs> okay, so if you're not raising your hand, let me try it this way. Has anybody ever had a client throw something at you that totally like caught you off guard, you weren't ready for, and now what do I do? Anybody? Good. Um, has anybody ever had a client that comes to you really expecting some serious results and the pressure is on you? Yeah? Good. By the way, um, if, anybody, if everybody is not raising your hand, you're either not paying attention or lying. <laughs> yeah. So. We're not accepting those. Well, except I would venture to say that all of our clients are expecting results. That's why they've come to us. And it's an easy trap for us to get hooked into, oh, I got to get them results. And that's where we need to learn how to be solid and grounded and have a good, clear foundation about who we are and how we show up and how we connect and engage with our clients so that we're not caught in that trap of have to get results, have to perform, have to deliver, but really how to be fully present. So that's part of what this work is about. So before we jump in, I want to get a little gauge here. Um, this is your own private information, but we just I like doing a little before and after here. Um, take a moment, write down on whatever piece of paper or on your hand or on your neighbor's forehead or wherever uh, so that you can easily see it. Um, we're going to just gauge your coaching confidence how you feel, your, how confident you are about your coaching. Um, I'll give you a scale. One is, I am not confident at all. Do not call me. Do not send me an email. <laughs> there are, I think at last count, 20,000 coaches worldwide. I'm 20,001, OK? That's where I am on the list. One is rock bottom zero, no confidence. 10 is really along the line, it doesn't matter, by the way, how long you've been coaching or how much experience, a 10 confidence is, you know what? Bring it on. I got it. Whatever you got, whatever you need help with, bring it to me. I don't know what it is. I'm not an expert, but I will work with you in the best of my capability. And I'm guessing we all have had experience, probably in both, <laughs> at some time or another. So just take a moment and notice for yourself where you are right now and write that number down. And perhaps that number will shift by the end of today. So whether or not you're a brand new coach, welcome. Thank you for being here. This will be something that you can learn with and take to your coaching as you're learning your coaching skills. If you're an intermediate coach, this it will be another level and depth to what you have already learned. And if you're in way experienced in all this stuff, thank you for being here. My hope is that this actually reminds you of things that you didn't know that you knew. So what are the mythical and fabled elements of coaching? <laughs> my goodness, this is so scientific. This is actually really simple. In my quest for my own discovery and growth, as well as helping other coaches figure out what they're missing, I've come across several different models for what coaching is, definitions. 
we are all very familiar with the ICF core competencies, right? Good. Love it. The audience participation is already great. <laughs> yes, I know ICF core competencies. We don't want to admit it. What, are we shy? So we all know about the ICF 11 core competencies, right? Yes. Excellent. Now, there are other groups that also have contributed in, in their own version. CTI has a very similar description and diagram about what coaching is. The, uh, um, the institute, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the uh, International Association of Coaching, which is another organization similar to ICF but on a smaller scale, um, they have a similar breakdown of the mastery is what they call it. And then one of the uh, co-founders of Coach U and also one of, you know, Thomas Leonard, which we talked about at the awards, he also had his own description called the 15 proficiencies of certified coaching. And they're all incredibly similar and they're all slightly different. And of course, every school and every training has adapted or adopted one of those models inspired by them and then probably made their own slight modifications. So the language changes and it's their way of saying, this is how we're different. No, this is what coaching really is. No, 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 they're wrong. They've almost got it, but this is what coaching really is. <laughs> and that's great and all for marketing and also to find for people to figure out what they connect with. Ooh, I like this school better. I like their method and, and language and approach. But let's be honest. We're all doing the same thing. We're all working with people to create change on many levels. So that got me curious. Well, wait, what do all these have in common? So I combined them all together. And then I noticed, <clears throat> well, this is mentioned here, but this is not mentioned there. And from my experience, this seems kind of important. So I might want to bring that in. You know, and this isn't even mentioned at all, but yet they bring it up over here. So you know what? I'm going to bring it in and incorporated. And so what I created was the 16, I think it's 16, um, elements, I lose track, uh, of our coaching. And we're going to go through them really quickly. These are all one, because you should know what they are already. But for anybody who's not familiar, there may be one or two that you're not quite sure about. So we're just going to create this list together. So this is where, by the way, audience participation, get ready to share. So the first one, it's probably something that we're all familiar with, which is naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. This is what we hold to be true. Anybody want to share their quick thoughts on naturally creative, resourceful, and whole as a foundational component of our coaching? Yes. Yeah, they're not the expert. Should we be using the microphone? Probably to pass around to people. Um, that we have to believe that the client, the client is naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. That they hold their answers within them. Or, if they don't know it, that they can be in a place where they can discover the information that they're missing. And, I will add, also the coach must be naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. Often we forget that. Either I'm brilliant at conveying this or you're already brilliant before I got here. I'll go with the latter. So why do I call these the elements of our coaching? Well, I recognize that these are the core foundational components of what coaching is. Now, you may be noticing, well, wait a minute. Now, I, I learned and one of the core competencies that we had to learn is powerful questions. Why is it not on here? Well, as I began to recognize this, I, I started looking at these, these components of our coaching, and I started to notice, by the way, anybody notice on the chart, does this look familiar? Periodic table, yeah. See, the whole thing about the periodic table of elements, if anybody remembers their eighth grade science, is that everything in our everything universe, the chair, the tablecloth, the carpeting, the microphone, you and me, we can all be broken down to basic molecules. And all that we are are just a collection of different types of molecules. Carbon, hydrogen, uh, um, 
Apparently, that's all I remember from eighth grade science. <laughs> Oxygen, <laughs> yes, and all of those. Um, and so that's it. If you break down anything beyond that, it ceases to be that element and that molecule. And it becomes just a collection of neurons and protons and electrons and quarks and subatomic particles and all this. And we go into quantum, which is a whole other world of coaching, which is a lot of fun. But so the elements as I began to recognize the core competencies, the proficiencies, the models, all of that stuff, these are the basic components. You can't get any basicer than curiosity and trust and intimacy and naturally create resourceful and whole. There, there's nothing underneath that. And yet, we have all these other coaching skills that we've been taught. Powerful questions, accountability, championing, uh, all bottom lining, all of these things. Well, it's a little ridiculous and, and exhausting to have to learn and memorize all of them. And I began to realize, well, wait a minute. This is actually, I got this from working with coaches. They would say, how do I get powerful questions? How do I make up powerful questions? How do I create powerful questions? Anybody ever worked with a list of powerful questions? <laughs> Hate them. Hate the list of powerful questions. Throw them away because they're just questions. The powerful part comes with the client. The best powerful question, that the, the easiest and simplest powerful question that I ever have been given to me and that I've ever asked is, hmm, that can take the client into a whole new direction. So it's not about the words. It's about something else, which got me even more curious. Well, wait a minute, how do you create a powerful question? How do you do that? And then I realized, ah, oh, perhaps all these other skills are like compound elements. Like water, for example, water in all our pictures, there's not an element of water. Water is comprised of hydrogen combining with oxygen. Oh, well, that is a whole different story. So if we can combine our coaching skills, we can create tons of other, or we can, if we combine our elements, we can create tons of other coaching skills. Vice versa, if we look at all our extensive coaching skills, we can identify the elements that create it. So we're going to play around with this and see what we come up with here. I want you to take a look at this list of elements that you've got and contemplate what two or more elements would you combine together to create the skill and art of powerful questions. How do you do that? People say, oh, no, no, no. This is how you do it. Just do it the way I do. Here's how you articulate what's going on. All you have to do is say, hmm, well, here's what I notice. And then just speak what you notice. Well, what if you're busy, if your skill sets are different, and your experience is different, and your methodology is different? You don't work that way. So don't teach me how to coach like you. Teach me how to coach like me. That's what I want to help you in this and in all the work, is to how to really harness what works for you. And this is a foundational process that works for everybody because you get to create your own recipe. Your next client calls you up and says, all right, coach, so my team, uh, my, my uh, employees, my staff, um, they are just not respecting me as a leader. I'm trying everything I can that I learned from management training, all that stuff. I'm doing all the stuff that my boss is telling me to do, and yet my team will not listen. What the heck am I supposed to do? Self-manage. Self He's like, oh, crap. Yep. Self-manage. Creating, Creating awareness. Great. OK, your next client calls you up and says, Coach, I don't know what to talk about today. <laughs> oh, crap. What are we going to do now? Where do you go?